Hello Matrix and welcome to Was A Matrix Exam Guide. My name is Looney and today we'll be focusing on your business studies paper one. All you need to do to get through to us and send us your questions or comments is follow us on all of our social media platforms or hit us up on our WhatsApp line and all of the details will be on the screen. We have a cool competition going on guys, so please stay tuned to get all of those details. As always, I'm not alone. With me are my sign language interpreter, Nicoline, as well as my awesome teacher, Dave. Over to you guys. Hi, welcome Matrix. I hope you're all keeping safe and uh, you're counting down. You have, a, you have less than two months to go before you finish your exam, so I hope you're putting in uh, the hard graft. Today we'll be talking about paper one, which has got to do with the, the business environments as well as the business operations of the business. So from 2020, there will now be two uh, business studies papers that you'll be writing, where in the past there was only one paper. So you'll be writing paper one and paper two. They are both uh, out of 150 marks and they're two hours in length. So when you break down the, the, the time and the marks, you have got 1.25 marks per minute. So make sure that you plan your time efficiently because if you, if you zone out for a couple of minutes, you're going to be wasting a lot of time of your paper that you won't be able to catch up and you could lose out on a lot of marks and that can be the difference between a distinction, not receiving a distinction, and between passing and failing. And we obviously want you guys to do as well as possible. So we're going to discuss what's going to be happening in your papers now, uh, particular topics that you guys must watch out for, uh, topics that you guys get confused with, and we'll also be doing a couple of practice questions just to build up your confidence so that when you guys go into paper one and paper two, you guys are flying high and you can knock it out the ballpark. So if we look for your paper, it's going to be split into three sections. You're going to have section A, section B, and section C. Section A is a compulsory section in which you'll have to do all of, uh, all of the, the questions. So you will have your, your multiple choice, you'll have your um, uh, match, match your columns, and you'll also have to pick out the correct word um, for, for a particular sentence. So there'll be three sub-questions in section A. They'll be for 10 marks each. There'll be five questions within each of those sub-questions, which will give you 30 marks. Um, look to, to use about 10 to 20 minutes for section A. Don't spend too much time on section A. And also make sure you answer every question in section A. Um, don't leave out um, um, like your multiple choice. Rather take a, a guess because if you leave out your multiple choice, you've got a 100% chance of getting zero for that, where if, you, if you, you take a chance, you could potentially get a, get a mark right there. So it's all about making sure that we, we, we pick our battles and we, we try and win as many of them as possible so that we can get, um, get the marks that, that you deserve. So that's section A. We'll now go on to section B. So section B comprises of three questions, and you have to just pick two. Please, whatever you do, make sure that you only answer two questions. You don't want to be answering all three questions because the markers will only mark the first two questions, and there you've wasted a lot of time. So out of your three questions are going to be made up as follows for uh, paper one. So the first one will be business environment. So all questions will be related to business environments, to all the chapters that have to do with business environments. The second question will have to do with business operations, and that'll relate to all the chapters that have to deal with business operations. And I'll go through what is going to make up business environments and business operations. The third question in section B is going to be a combination of business environments and business operations. And the questions for the, for the respective questions will vary from the simple questions where it's name uh, what this act is, for example, all the way up to where you have to evaluate different concepts. So there's going to be a wide range of questions from one mark questions to potentially a, a 12 mark question. So, so make sure that when you're reading, in your reading time, you pick the, 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 the section that you are most confident, most confident in. Then section C, 
is, uh, is going to be your, your essay question. You're going to get two options there. One will be on business environments, and then you'll have one question which will be on business operations. And within your essay question, you're going to have four sub-questions. Right? And in terms of business environments, they can link a whole bunch of concepts together and examine, um, examine you on that. The same with, uh, with business operations. So you need to make sure that you understand those particular sections really, really well so that you can, you can benefit from that there. Now, if you look, um, your, your um, essay question will be for 40 marks. Um, try and leave 30 minutes so that you have enough time in which to, to answer the question in its entirety. I've seen over the years how many um, learners don't uh, make sure that they manage their time properly and then they, they don't end up answering the, the essay and end up losing quite a, quite a few marks there. Right. So if we look at uh, the business environments, the business environments will be made up of these three subsections. Right, so we've got uh, the macro environment, right, and they, they will be discussing recent legislation that impacts on the business. Right, so um, you'll be looking at, at things like the Employment Equity Act, the Labor Relations Act. So it's all legislation that has a direct impact on, on the business. The second part will be business strategies. All right, so, so what strategies can the business use? You'll know that there's different strategies and will also determ uh, be determined by what phase of, of um, the business life the, the business is actually in. Uh, we'll discuss that a little bit more further on. And then the, the final section is like the business environments and business, business sectors. All right, then uh, we go into business operations. All right, uh, the first one that... Um, section of, of business operations is the human resource function, quite, a, quite a, a big, important function. And then the second one will be uh, uh, all about quality, right? Very, very complex uh, section quality. So make sure that you understand it because a lot of people get confused with the different terminologies of quality. However, we'll be going through that um, today and I'll help you guys, um, I'll help guide you to make sure that you don't get anything confused. Right, so for paper one, one of the first things that you must know is that you must know all the acts in detail, right, including its purpose. So what is the purpose for the respective acts? What I'd suggest that you do is get a big piece of paper, right, make columns for all the different acts that you guys will be doing, and then make a, make a row where you say, right, what is the purpose of the Employment Equity Act? What is the purpose of the Labor Relations Act? And you, and you discuss all your different acts, right? And make sure that you can differentiate between the different acts, because what often happens is that learners will get acts confused, and there you're losing from four to potentially 12 marks, which is going to make a massive impact on your paper there. All right, you need to know the advantages and disadvantages um, of the particular acts. You'll see that they'll often say evaluate, or what is the impact of this act, so know the advantages and disadvantages. So once again, in that big uh, piece of paper, you're right there. What are the advantages of this act? What are the disadvantages of this act? As, as, a, as a rule of thumb, just to be safe, make sure that you know five advantages and five disadvantages of each of the acts. And that should have you covered for, for any question. Then you must know the effectiveness of the acts. And if there's any discriminating actions, and penalties for, for non-compliance. Okay, so make sure that you, you, you know those, those acts in their entirety right, so that you don't get um, found out if, uh, if, you, if a question like that comes along in, uh, in, your, in your final paper. Right, so rather be prepared for everything and know, know every single act. All right. um, now you also will need to know your different types of strategies. Right, so we will have different types of strategies. You'll have intensive, uh, defensive, right, uh, and there's a whole, uh, a whole uh, um, range more strategies. So know your strategies as well. Make sure that when you make notes that you're discussing the different strategies, what they used for, which stage of the business life 
Would you use a different strategy? If you're just starting out as a business, you're not going to go into a defensive strategy. Right? If your business is on its last legs, that's when you'll be looking at various defensive strategies. Uh, you need to know how to apply them, how uh, to formulate them, and how to implement them. Right? And then you'll also need to know how do you evaluate a strategy and what industrial tools do we have there. So if you look at SWAT, Porter's Fire Forces, these are tools that the business can use that can help it with its strategy and can help the business going forward. Uh, and then we'll have um, the business sectors um, versus the business environments. Uh, a lot of people get business sectors confused. Your sectors are your primary, secondary, and tertiary. Your business environment has got to do with your micro environment, your market environment, and your macro environment. Now, it doesn't matter which sector a business belongs to, they will always have a micro environment, a market environment, and a macro environment. All right, and then when we look um, at uh, human resources for paper one, right, you need to know all the relevant acts that will uh, be applicable to human resources. So if you look at your Employment Equity Act, your Labor Relations Act, it's going to uh, impact on human resources. So you need to see uh, what does this act do for the human resource department, how can it make the human resource department better, or how is it, um, it going to affect the human resource department. Then we've got the legalities of employment contracts, um, screening and placement of employees, interviewing, selection, induction, salary determination, and then finally, your, your fringe benefits. So if you look at human resources, it's quite, quite um, in-depth. So make sure you get your, your head around that and, and break down each of the human resources sections and understand where they are and how they, and how they fit in. All right, then we, we look at quality. We have quality control versus quality assurance. All right, a lot of people get very confused with quality control and quality assurance. Quality control, we're busy sampling, we're seeing at the end of the, of the line, is the product good enough for us? Right, where quality assurance is making sure that the raw materials are of the correct standard, our process is of the correct standard, and we are producing quality products there. So you, you can be assured that when you buy something, that it's absolute quality there. Um, so that's quality control and quality assurance, and we've got quality management, there's quality performance, right? And then we've got our quality management system, and then finally the eight business functions, right? And what are the quality indicators for the different business functions? Make sure that you know your eight different business functions and how quality can be, be linked into there. So like marketing, one of their quality indicators will be like, right, what does our target market want? Who is our target market? How are we going to advertise our product or service to our, our, our potential customers. If you look at finance, their quality indicators is making sure that they draw up correct budgets and they, and they stick to those budgets and they only invest in, um, in, in assets that is going to make money for the business and that there's no irregular expenditure. And then uh, total quality management, you are going to have to know that in its entirety, and there's a whole bunch of, of elements that make up total quality management. For total quality management, you need to uh, realize that this is a culture that has to be throughout the whole business. Everyone needs to make sure that they, that they are involved with, uh, with quality, and that quality is their number one priority there. Quite a difficult section to get through, but if you, if you can relate it to, um, to businesses, you guys should be able to, to fly through it. You can even relate it to, to your favorite football team or, or your favorite cricket team if you want. And then, uh, yeah, that's, that's us there. Back to you, Looney. Thank you so much, Dave. Guys, we are going to take a very short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll see you straight after this. Welcome back from the break, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've just joined us, we are doing your exam guide for business studies. Well, great news, everyone. We've got a competition running. 
All you need to do is check out the Facebook page for Wizometrics to get all of the details. We're giving away two gigs of data to two matriculants. And all you need to do is hashtag Wazowina and check out all of the other details on Facebook. Over to you, Dave. All right, so thank you very much. We're going to be going uh, over, over strategies now. So you, you've got four different strategies that, that you need to make sure that you understand completely. And you need to understand where each strategy falls, falls into place in terms of what the business is looking to achieve. All right, so the first strategy that I'm going to discuss is your integration strategy, horizontal versus vertical. So a horizontal integration strategy is where I might buy another business that is similar to mine. So if I'm a butcher, I buy a butcher perhaps in, a, in another suburb. Right, we're vertical integration. We've got forward and backward. So forward could potentially be if I'm a butcher, I decide that I'm going to go and buy a farm so that I can control the quality um, of produce that I'm getting, uh, that I can sell on to, to, my, um, to my customers. And then you, you get forward, forward integration. So perhaps I will, as a butcher, I might go and buy um, a restaurant where I supply the restaurant with, with all the meat from, from my butchery so I can ensure that I have got quality and I know what, uh, what type of uh, products are coming through. The next um, strategies that we are going to discuss are your intensive strategies. All right, so here we've got market penetration versus market development versus product development. All right, so market penetration is making sure that like we're getting into the market as quickly as possible. So often what would happen is that businesses would either drop their prices so that more people are willing to try our product, or we're going to increase our, our, um, our marketing, uh, increase our advertising. So we're trying to get as much market share as possible, getting into the market and penetrating the market. Where if you look at product development, has all got to do with, with creating new products. So if we look at um, uh, uh, cell phone companies, they're very good at coming out with, with not only just new phones, but products that might relate to the phone. So if you look, um, there's, there's earphones that has got to do with product development. So existing customers will want to use our products because of our, our reputation. And then finally, we have market development. That's where we go and get our products into, into new markets. So that could potentially be such as an international a, a restaurant chain decides that Europe and North America is too saturated for them. So they decide to come to South Africa to increase the, the size of, uh, of their, of their um, markets. Then we have our diversification strategies. So you have concentric, conglomerate versus uh, horizontal. So that's where we're trying to increase um, our, our product range, um, whereby we can increase our, our, com our complete um, market share of, of the business. Think of um, like uh, an organization like Virgin, uh, their own uh, Virgin Trains, Virgin Active Gyms, Virgin Airlines, Virgin Media. So they've got a whole bunch of different businesses that would fall under their, under their scope or under their, their umbrella. And then finally, we have our defensive strategies. All right, and here you're looking at retrenchments, divestiture, and liquidation. So retrenchment is where we might try to reduce the amount of workers or the amount of lines that we have so that we can cut down our, our costs. So you'll see this has been quite a, quite a big um, uh, happening in, in South Africa's economy at the moment. There are a lot of businesses are getting smaller uh, due, um, due to the, the COVID pandemic. You um, also um, have divestiture. That's where we might sell off lines that are no longer profitable for the business and then take that money that we got and invest it back in the business to try and grow and strengthen the business. And then the final defensive strategy that we have is liquidation. Once we hit the liquidation strategy, there, there is no turning back. Uh, the business will be sold, all of its assets will be sold, and we'll use that money that we get to, to pay off um, all, of our, all of our creditors. And once the business is liquidated, it no longer exists. So that's why it is one of that's why it is the final strategy. And you also have to look at the different strategies to see where your business is. 
So if your business is just first starting out, you're going to try a market penetration because you're trying to get as much people out there as possible. If your business is failing and you have to shut it down, you'll go for the um, defensive approach and in terms of that, you'll go for, for, for liquidation. All right. Um, in terms of, of the different acts, the Consumer Protection Act versus the National Credit Act, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, learners get confused um, between those two acts. I think you guys see uh, the, the C's that are in there and then you get confused there. Now the Consumer Protection Act is all about ensuring our safety for products or services that we buy um, and also ensuring that we don't get taken advantage of as consumers. So if you go to a car dealership and they tell you that a car is brand new um, and then you subsequently you buy it and you subsequently find out that it's second hand, right, according to the Consumer Protection Act, that is illegal. Right? Uh, the Consumer Protection Act also looks at our safety so that we know what, what um, goods and services we are buying and uh, that, that don't have a negative impact on that. Where the National Credit Act has got to do with how consumers will be able to apply for credit. And it also it's there to protect us to make sure that we're not getting taken advantage of from various financial institutions. That's why you'll see that whenever a financial institution advert comes on on TV, at the bottom they'll say that they are registered um, financial institution. So the National Credit Act regulates that. It regulates how we um, can take out debt and, um, and ensures that people don't get taken advantage of. So like, if you guys as matriculants, you want to take out a loan, according to the National Credit Act, they won't allow you to take out that loan because you cannot afford to pay back that loan as, you still, um, as, as you're still in school. Right, and then uh, a big mistake that a lot of you learners make in your papers is the types of leave. You need to make sure that you write out the correct term. All right, so if I'm going to, um, my, my, my son has just been put in hospital and I need to take a day off, off work so that I can go spend it with him in hospital, right, that'll be known as family responsibility leave. All right, if I'm taking a holiday um, at the end of the year, that is known as annual leave. So make sure that you know what, um, what leave is, is relevant to you, different scenarios, and make sure that you write it out in full. Please, whatever you do, do not um, use abbreviations. Rather, write it out in full. Because if you use abbreviations, you might lose out on some marks there. And if you're losing 10 marks per paper over, over two papers, that's, that's 20 marks. You're looking at like 7% that you've lost there because you just didn't write out things properly. All right, and then uh, also make sure that you understand the difference between the Employment Equity Act and Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment Act. All right, the Employment Equity Act is all about making sure that there's equality in the workplace. No one's discriminated against for various reasons. Could be uh, religion, culture, race, disabilities. It's all about making sure that everyone's got a, a fair chance in the workplace. Everyone can apply um, for, for relevant positions. And it's also there to make sure that the demographics of the country is represented in, uh, in the organization. Where the Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment Act is all about helping previously disadvantaged individuals be able to take part in the economy, and there's, there's various ways that they can take part in the economy. So even though there, there could be, um, when it comes to employment equity, previously disadvantaged individuals, right, please don't confuse the, the two different acts, otherwise you're going to lose out on quite a few marks there as well. All right, um, we're gonna go on to a, a, a question now, and uh, the question is, explain the purpose of the Labor Relations Act. All right, so once again, like in the beginning, I said make that whole table where you guys put what is the purpose of the act, what, is, what are its advantages and disadvantages, right? This can uh, be in an essay question, it can be a sub-question in an essay question, or it could be a section B question. So either way, you guys must know this really, really well. All right, so let's look at what the answer says. So it provides a framework structure for labor relations between employers, employees, trade unions, and employees 
an employer organization. So it tells us, right, how can we work with, uh, work with our employees? Like, what must we do? How, can we, how do we communicate? What must we do to um, work with trade unions? Where does trade unions fall in, uh, in all of this? Right. It promotes uh, collective bargaining. Um, so um, if you see, if you go to your, your teacher and you ask for, for a free period for argument's sake, it's very easy for your teacher to say no. However, if the whole class is there, there's a little bit more pressure. Right? It's the same thing with collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is where your trade unions, they, they negotiate with the employer organizations on behalf of all of the workers. Um, uh, promotes workplace forums and accom to accommodate employees with, uh, with indecision making. So um, if a company decides that they want to leave Johannesburg and move down to, to Port Elizabeth, right, they have to first discuss it with the employees. They can't just make decisions and, uh, and uh, tell the employees what's happening. Uh, they have to, there has to be consultation between the employees. And the Labor Relations Act facilitates this. Um, it provides for the right to lock out by the employer as a recourse uh, to lengthy strikes. So it also does help the employer. It, it regulates um, uh, how, how um, employees can go on strike and what recourse employers have as well. Um, it provides a framework and a structure for labor relations between employers, employees, trade unions, employer, and employer organizations. Right. Um, provides uh, for, the, for the right to lock out by the, the employer as a recourse, as I said there, and promotes fair labor practices between the employers and, uh, and the employees. And it clarifies the transfer of employment contracts between existing and new employees. So they're just going to say, right, what, uh, what type of contract are you allowed uh, um, in terms of uh, the work that the people are doing and to make sure that people don't get taken advantage of. Um, promote simple procedures for the registration of trade unions and employer organizations. So uh, trade unions are there to, to protect employees. So this just helps uh, facilitate how easily we can make a, a trade union should employ, uh, employees choose to do so. Right, and it advances the economic development, social justice, and labor peace to ensure that the workplace maintains the basic rights of the employees. So we're going to make sure that no one's rights are, are um, in, uh, infringed upon. All right, um, then you have um, the establishes the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation, Arbit and Arbitration, or known as the CCMA, so that if an uh, employee has got um, a, a grievance with the business, they can go to an outside party, an independent party. They will look at the, the facts of the matter objectively, and then they'll give a ruling, and that ruling will then be binding to either the employee or the employer. Um, it establishes the labor courts and labor appeal courts, so if nothing, uh, if there's no happiness at, at the CCMA from the, the employer or the employee, they can then go to the, the labor court or the labor appeal court. So that shows you the whole structures that you can go through in order to, to solve your grievance. And then uh, uh, you can have any other relevant answer um, as long as that you, you can back it up. Thank you so much, Dave. Guys, we are going to take a very short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll see you straight after this. Welcome back from the break, Matrix. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are still assisting you with your exam guide for that upcoming exam. Please send us all of your questions, your comments. Let us know how everything is going, and we'll assist you wherever we can. Back to Dave. Uh, so we'll be continuing now with uh, the business operations uh, side of things, and we'll be talking about the different forms of recruitment. So the different forms of recruitment you get is internal versus external recruitment. So internal recruitment is getting um, someone from within the organization already. Um, there, there are a whole bunch of advantages and disadvantages for that. Uh, an advantage is that we, we know what the person is like, 
we know what their, their work ethic is like, and we don't have to spend a lot of time trying to go and find someone to um, fill this position that we have in the organization. The disadvantage is that we might not have the, the people in our organization that have the skills that we actually need. Um, you also have a problem where, where you're not getting any new ideas coming into the business because it's already from, uh, from the inside um, of the business. Where external recruitment is where you recruit people from outside of the business, so outside of the organization. There are also advantages and disadvantages to that. An advantage is that that person might have the skills that the, the particular position requires to be filled. Um, they can bring in um, new ideas. Where disadvantages are that your current employees might feel hard done by because they didn't get that promotion. And we also don't know what type of, of um, work ethic this person has that, that's coming into the organization. You need to know your, your different recruitment uh, methods. So if you look at uh, internal, you might have um, a workplace email that goes around advertising a, a particular um, position. It might be a workplace board, um, where if you look at external recruitment, you might be using recruitment agencies. You might be advertising in, uh, in different um, publications about uh, the position that is open there. So make sure that you know the difference between the two, internal and external, and you can give examples for, for both, and you can also uh, that you know the advantages and disadvantages for both. It's quite a, quite a common question that can be in your essay, or it could be in a, a, a section B question as well. Our next question is we're going to look at job description versus uh, job specification. And I've also put your quote from text. So often they will ask for you to quote from, uh, from the text in a, in a case study that they give. Please remember to put everything in quotation marks, otherwise you'll be losing a lot of um, easy marks there. And now back to the, your job description and your job specification. So your job description is what does the actual job entail? All right, so if I, have, uh, if I become the manager of an international football team, and say, right, your job description is that you must um, train the players, you must come up with a game plan, uh, you must be able to be competitive in various leagues. Where the job specification is what do you actually need in order to perform the job? All right, so what skills do you need? What qualifications do you need? What experience do you need? All right, so if we look at, uh, at Nicole here, her specification is that she needs to know how to sign. Otherwise, she can't do her, her job there. Right, so understand the difference between, between the two and how you can apply them. They may also give you a scenario in which you have to motivate your answer by quoting directly from the text. Please, please, whatever you do, do not forget to quote. Otherwise, you are going to lose out on marks. And we keep saying to you guys, right, if we can get all of those marks that you guys potentially lose, right, that could make a massive difference between passing and failing or between getting that, uh, that better symbol that you are after. The next is we have to identify the correct business functions in relation to their quality indicators. So they, will, they, um, they could ask you, right, what are the quality indicators for, for purchasing? So purchasing would go out there and make sure that they can find suppliers that are reliable and that can give um, the, the raw materials that, that the product needs. So if you look at um, Rolls-Royce, they are going to have the best paint suppliers in the world because they, they pride themselves on the quality of, uh, of, their, of their products. So if you look, as I mentioned earlier, in finance, they'll be making sure that they draw up the correct budgets and they're spending their money in the correct places that are going to generate the business uh, the maximum amount of money. If we look at public relations, uh, one of their quality indicators is to make sure that um, there's a lot of um, positive publicity about the organization. If there is any negatives of the organization, such as a uh, a complaint by a customer that it gets answered in a timeless fashion and that the customers are satisfied. If you look at administration, it's making sure that we keep the, the correct um, information and that we can access it 
whenever we want. Um, human resources, it's about making sure that we're upskilling our workers um, at all times and that we're getting the correct workers in for that, for that particular position. So look at your eight different business functions and look at what their quality indicators are and their quality performance, right? And make sure that you guys understand that. Once again, that can come into an essay question or it could even be a section B question. So go through it completely. And then total quality management, you need to make sure that you uh, understand all of the elements of total quality management, such as total uh, uh, client satisfaction, um, continuous improvement of processes and systems. Right? So make sure you know that why um, that is important and how all of those elements uh, are made up as well as know what goes into quality. Right? It's a, quite a confusing section. A lot of people get, get confused with this. So break it down and just link it together so that you guys can understand what goes where so that, um, that you don't lose any marks. Once again, also, um, you could potentially have an entire uh, essay on uh, total quality management where they break down the different sections. More than likely, what they'll do is they'll take an element from total quality management and put it in an essay question, and it can also be a section B question. So make sure you just go through it in its entirety. All right, um, we're going to go through a question now. Outline the purpose of induction as a human resources activity. This is, uh, this is for six marks. So um, we're going to go through the potential answers there. Uh, it will usually be about two marks per point. Make sure that you write out in full sentences. You will not be given marks if you, if you just write a, a couple of words. Write it out in full sentences. Each point on the new line underneath there. So, so keep it like a business report. Remember at the end of the year that your, that your markers are going to be marking thousands of papers a day. So let's make it a lot easier for them to find those marks for you and we'll ensure that you get those marks. So let's look at the, the suggested answer for this question. The first part is it induces new employees right, um, with, uh, with uh, the current uh, employees of the company there so that they can get um, some relationships just makes them feel a lot, uh, the new employee, a lot more at ease. Think of when uh, you started your first day of grade eight. Um, if you knew other people uh, at your high school, it made you feel a lot more comfortable there. Right? That's the same thing with the business there. Um, the new employee is going to be a little, bit, uh, a little bit shy, maybe a little bit scared, where the induction just helps them and they can start to build relationships with people within that organization. The next part is it creates opportunities for new employees to experience and explore different departments. Right, so they can go and see, right, what happens in the production department? What happens in the marketing department? Right, where's the finance department? In case you need money for a project, you know where to go. Right, um, how does the administration department work? So it just shows you, uh, it gives like the employee the lay of the land in terms of the, the actual organization, and it just makes them a lot more comfortable in terms of um, uh, actually performing within the, the organization. Next part is our safety regulations so that um, it explains to the, the employee right, any safety regulations. So perhaps they uh, a refinery that's making uh, explosive products, right? That's going to say, right, this is the safety um, equipment that you should be wearing at all times. These are the safety procedures that you have to follow. So perhaps you have to have a breathalyzer every morning before you go into the refinery to make sure that you're not under the influence of, of anything. Um, because if you are, you can then become a risk to the organization and to your fellow employees. Right, and then the last one, uh, it communicates information about our products or services. So it'll tell the employee, right, this is what we are selling. This is the service that we offer. This is how it operates. Because there's nothing worse than when a potential customer goes up to an employee and asks the employee questions about a particular product and the employee isn't able to answer them. It doesn't give a very good um, image of, of the business. Right, so that, uh, that will answer that, that question. Let's go on to another question. Right, so explain the selection procedure as a human resource activity. So it's saying, right, what is selection about? Remember I told you in human resources there's a whole bunch of different uh, elements that make it up. 
uh, selection is one of the elements, and this question is for eight marks. It can be a section B question. It can also be an essay question. So let's see what, this, what the answer to this is. Firstly, you have to determine fair assessments criteria on which selection will be based. All right, so we're going to make sure that, that it's fair, um, so, and it's, uh, it's not un unreasonable. So a fair um, um, selection criteria to be the, the Springbok rugby coach is that you have um, international experience at either club level or coaching a, a fellow international team, right? So that, that's, quite, that's quite fair. Um, we cannot um, have any uh, discriminatory um, elements to that because there are also laws that determine how we select. Um, if you look at uh, the Employment Equity Act and the Labor Relations Act, so we're going to make sure there's no discrimination when it's coming into um, selecting employees for the organization. Um, applicants must uh, submit the application forms or their CVs and certified copies of, of personal documents, uh, maybe your qualifications, your, 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 your ID. Um, please, guys, um, make sure that, that everything on the CV, uh, that you put on your CV is, is correct. Um, there, there is a lot of organizations that will go through your, your CV to make sure that everything's correct and you don't want to uh, be found where you've been caught out lying on your CV because that can have detrimental, uh, detrimental impact on you and the organization. Um, and then sort the, we've got to sort the received uh, documents and CVs according to our assessment criteria. So I, I might want to apply to be the, the next Springbok coach. Unfortunately, um, when they look at my, my CV, they'll see, right, uh, you do not uh, have the, the selection, well, you do not match the criteria for our selection. All right, um, we have to use screen and determine which applicants meet the minimum job requirements. So according to our criteria, say, right, this applicant meets, uh, meets the criteria. Uh, Russ Erasmus has got lots of international experience, so he meets the criteria a lot better than, uh, than Dave Hansen, who unfortunately does not meet the criteria. Next, uh, we'll have our preliminary interviews, right? So we'll, we'll have um, little interviews to see, right, is this person the right person? Because on paper they might look amazing, uh, but we want to meet them face to face, see what, uh, what they're actually about. Then the next point is we're going to do our reference checks to make sure that everything on, uh, on, uh, on our CV is correct and that we haven't lied in, in any way whatsoever. Uh, they're going to compile a short list of potential candidates, right? Uh, the candidates will then uh, be invited for, for, for an interview. Um, and then uh, after that, a written offer is made to the candidate where they say, right, congratulations, Russ Erasmus, we have decided that we'd like to appoint you as, uh, as the next Springbok coach. And then uh, they will also inform unsuccessful applicants that uh, unfortunately um, their outcome of, of the application was, was not favorable. All right, um, for paper one, please do not forget the following. All right, um, use your exam guidelines as a checklist. So if you go through your exam guidelines, there's a checklist on everything that you must know. It should say there what learners must know. All right, tick everything there. If you can answer all of the, the um, the little sections on the exam guidelines, then you'll know where, where um, any weaknesses of yours lie and you'll have a lot more confidence going into the paper. Um, manage your time, and I cannot say this anymore, manage your time effectively. All right. A lot of people will spend 30 minutes on section A, which is only for, for 30 marks, that now leaves you uh, with one and a half hours in which to do 120 marks. So, so you, you're really, really pushing, um, 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 pushing yourself, putting yourselves under pressure there. So just make sure that uh, you manage your time effectively. Um, start your 10 minutes of, of your reading time by reading the, the essay options first. 
so that you can see which, uh, which essay you want to do. And then finally, you can start with any question. So if you want, start with section C, your essay, get it out the way to make sure that you have enough time there. And uh, all the best, start putting in uh, the hard yards now and you guys will get the rewards that you deserve. Thanks, Luni. Well then, guys, that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining us and for engaging on our online platforms. A big congratulations to all of our winners who will be announced on Facebook straight after the show. Don't forget, we've got the revision for you guys. All you need to do to check out your favorite subject is go to www.wasamatrix.co.za. From me, Looney, Nicolene, and Dave, it's goodbye and thank you guys. <laughs>